The president, please be seated. The court is now back in session. I hand over the floor to the civil party lawyer to put the question to the civil party and the chamber wishes to invite uh, to advise counsel that the time you have left. Uh, is 15 minutes inclusive of the question and answer. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Madame, Madame Thank Seng, you for that, le, Mr. President. Les, les Madame Seng, in the 15 minutes that we have remaining, sur, I wish to return uh, les de Phnom Penh, very briefly to the topic of the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Dans le village de Tameng. And Vous vous avez déclaré au sujet de l'évacuation de Phnom Penh que vous aviez vu des malades et des personnes âgées Penh, euh, le long des routes. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous expliquer people, ce qui est arrivé à ces personnes Est-ce qu'elles euh, étaient exactly euh, laissées saw? au bord des routes ou est-ce qu'il y avait euh, des gens pour s'occuper d'elles Est-ce qu'il y avait des gens qui étaient care pendant the journey When we were evacuated out of Phnom Penh, I encountered numerous things. Uh, when on the morning we left Phnom Penh, we saw a lot of corpses along the road. The dead body uh, were scattered all everywhere and along the roads I also some people who were dying uh, they particularly the elderly uh, they were deserted uh, they uh, were actually uh, sitting there uh, helplessly and uh, they were really dying some of them were uh, crying bitterly, uh, looking for uh, their children and relatives. I uh, saw an old man who was uh, lying on the road. Uh, he was uh, almost motionless. Uh, he could not really move uh, his body. And I saw that uh, there were uh, and, uh crawling all over his body and went into his eye and I saw the tear coming out of his corps. house and when I was walking and Entrer witnessing this yeux, uh, mis uh, misery I could not hold my tear. I saw uh, dead bodies de uh, everywhere and people were dying along the street. I also once uh, stepped on dead bodies. I uh, Sometimes walk des over the dead body. Merci, Madame Seng. Vous nous avez Thank dit un you, peu Madame plus tôt tout à l'heure que vous aviez été séparé de votre on, famille. Est-ce que vous pouvez family? nous dire à quel moment vous avez été séparé d'eux et ce que ça vous a fait à l'âge que vous aviez à l'époque d'être séparé de votre famille? I was separated from my family when I got to the main village, uh, District 109, Takao Province. At that time, I was uh, assigned to a different unit, and my parents were also uh, separated and assigned to a different uh, unit. And I was sent to the unit. I was very young. I was uh, nine years old when I left Phnom Penh. When I got to that unit, I stayed in Kampeng, uh, 
pagoda. I did not have a spare clothes uh, to change. Uh, I only had a pack of clothes uh, on my vest. And it was during rainy season uh, over there uh, at the time, and I uh, got very cold uh, at night, and I miss my uh, parents and my grandparents dearly. Uh, whenever I woke up, I uh, could not hold my tear. I could not, however, return uh, to my village because I was uh, forced to uh, move forward. I had to keep on walking. At the time, uh, I got to Trochgom commune. I uh, miss my parents dearly because never had I separate uh, from my uh, parents, and I had to work with the elderly people, with uh, older people, and I did not have uh, enough food uh, to eat. I only had uh, watery cruel uh, at that time, and I had no sibling, I had no family members around, so I cried uh, every night. But I, uh, no matter how hard I cried, and I could never return uh, back home. Merci, Madame Seng. Thank you, Madame Seng. In the village of Taimeng, Vécu après avoir été déporté de Phnom Penh, y avait-il plusieurs catégories de personnes, plusieurs catégories d'habitants, et si oui, quelle était la différence entre ces catégories Et si oui, quelles étaient les catégories distinctes During the uh, three year, eight months, and 20 days, uh, the 17 Apro people like me, uh, we had to live a miserable life because we had a little food ration uh, indeed. Uh, but as for the base people, uh, they had different food ration, but I did not know uh, exactly how much uh, they got, but they uh, ate uh, in a different place. And as for the work assignment as well, they had a different workload assigned to them. And as uh, for us, the 17 April people were given different workload, and they uh, ordered us. Of course, the base people also worked at that time, but uh, their work assignment was different from us. Merci, Madame Seng. Vous, vous avez dit que Thank vous you, avez Seng. participé à des séances d'autocritique et que si vous vous trompiez, vous étiez battu. Euh, Qu'entendez-vous par euh, lorsque vous vous trompiez when we were in Trot uh, Chongkom unit, uh, upon returning from our field work uh, at around 8 uh, o'clock in the evening, uh, we did not go to bed at that time. We would be summoned, summoned to for a meeting, and there was a criticism and self criticism session. And in that session, I was normally criticized by uh, others that I was afraid of. Uh, Liches, and uh, I was slow in completing my work assignment. So at that time, I was very young, was too young to know uh, much things. So whenever they criticized me, I would criticize them back. Uh, so I was, as a consequence, uh, bitten by the unit chief when I uh, did not uh, speak uh, properly at that time. Madame Seng, j'ai une, une dernière question à vous poser. Madame Seng, I have one final question. Qu'attendez-vous de, de ce tribunal aujourd'hui? What do you expect of this tribunal today? In the, this opportunity, I am expecting that this tribunal, the Khmer Rouge uh, tribunal, move forward expeditiously. And I am also pleased that I have an opportunity to come and testify before the chamber. And I would also like uh, to um, 
say in front of the chamber that uh, during the period of the uh, Democratic Campuchia, I lost my eyesight. Who is going to uh, help me in my life? I am all alone. I am very lonely and nobody helps me out. Je suis seul et personne ne m'aide. Merci, Madame Seng. Je n'ai pas d'autres questions. Je sais à quel point il était difficile pour vous de, de venir témoigner aujourd'hui. Je sais à quel point il était difficile pour vous de venir témoigner aujourd'hui. Je Madame Seng, aurait souhaité poser deux questions aux accusés, avec votre permission. Monsieur le Président, je pense que Madame Seng souhaite vous adresser aux accusés avec deux brèves questions, avec votre permission. Le Président. Le Président. Yes, uh, Madame Sivata, you uh, may proceed Madame with your question. Sivita, However, you have to ask your question through uh, the president of the chamber. You may not uh, address uh, to the accused uh, by, uh, directly. So you may proceed uh, putting the question to me. Je vous en prie, la parole est à vous. Madame Sivata, I have uh, two questions. My first question. Premièrement. Why did the regime leaders at that time force uh, children, under age children, to work like adults at that time? My second question, I know that during that regime, people had cultivated rice, they had surplus of uh, rice production, but why didn't they give sufficient food for people to eat? The President, thank you, Madam. Uh, I will refer your two questions to the uh, co-accused. First, I refer these questions uh, to Mr. Kilsampon. Mr. Kilsampon, you may proceed. Kilsampon, good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. Good afternoon, everyone in the courtroom. Good afternoon, Madame Seng Sivuta. The events that you have described actually shocked me. I did not have even the slightest knowledge that Je pas la miners idée were used to work as adults, as you just stated. Les mineurs travaillaient comme les adultes, you were only comme vous 11 dit. years old vous and you were asked to go down the pit of the pig excrement and to carry the pig excrement. You fell down and you were beaten up until you lost your eyesight. Your feet were swollen, you could not walk properly, and you were still asked to continue working. I could not even imagine such a situation would happen. Une telle situation. That is my first response to voilà your first question. Que en à votre question. I come to God. You stated that you tried your best to cultivate the products and uh, against the surplus and why you were starved. The initial situation was difficult, but gradually, year by year, the situation improved Mais année année, la situation s'est améliorée de façon importante. And for that, you, as well as other Cambodian people who worked very vous, hard, should be given sufficient food. And fort, how come people were starved and what happened to the rice? Assez de nourriture. I cannot give you that answer. 
Je ne peux And my apology for that. Et je le regrette. And thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. President, thank you. Le Président. Merci. We will now redirect the questions to Mr. Nunchi so that you can respond to the questions. Vous pouvez répondre à la question. I notice the counsel for Nunchi, Mr. Victor Coupe, on his feet. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Merci, our client has instructed us to tell you that he doesn't want to answer this question because he's tired. Qu'il ne souhaite pas répondre à cette question car il est fatigué. Mr. President, Le Président. thank you, Council. Merci, Maître. The floor is now given to the prosecution to put questions to this civil party. You may proceed. Vous avez la parole. Gender Harris, my good afternoon, Mr. Gender President, Mr. Jonas, and good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon, Madame. Since the time, my name is Gender Harris, my and the National Co Deputy Co Prosecutor of the Smyros Tribunal, and I have some questions for you on behalf of the prosecution. Could you clarify to the court? When you were sent to live in the Cambodian Hotel in Phnom Penh between 1972 to 1975, what was the living condition at the time? In 1972, I came to live in the Cambodian Hotel. I was considered as a refugee, and at that time there was the United Nations and the American organization who fed us with the food. And we were given sufficient staff for our living, food, rice, uh, our daily consumption, bed, bed sheet, enfin, mosquito net, etc. My family lived there and uh, we found it uh, a happy living condition. My other sister and I were studying and we were supported by the organization of it food and book Nous recevions de la nourriture, des livres. So the living condition there was good as we were supported by the American Red Cross organization. La Croix Rouge américaine nous apportait son soutien. Question. Comparing the living condition under the Khmer Rouge regime and your living condition at the Cambodian hotel. Si vous faites une comparaison entre vos conditions de vie sous les Khmer Rouge Et impression celle à l'époque où vous étiez au Cambodiana and que pouvez-vous nous dire Réponse. if i have to compare the living condition that i lived before and after the en comparaison, 3 years 8 months period it was like the sky and the earth c'était comme le ciel it et la terre completely different under the Khmer Rouge, I could ans, not attend school, I did not enjoy the comfort of my parents, and I had to live separately from my parents. We were not given sufficient food, and we had to find supplement for the food that we were given. So you could not compare the situation between these two conditions or events. Question. When you were asked to leave through the evacuation, Question. what kinds of orders were given to you by the Khmer Rouge soldiers and could you refuse the orders or the orders were absolute that you had to leave? Answer. I was pretty young. And I did not know about the event clearly. 
je ne comprenais pas clairement morning, ce qui se passait. Ce dont je me souviens, c'est que le matin, arrived, de ce jour-là, les soldats sont arrivés. Je ne savais même pas qu'ils étaient des soldats de Clermont. Je ne savais pas qu'ils étaient des soldats de Clermont. Ils étaient venus libérer la population de Phnom Penh. People from Phnom Penh should leave uh, Phnom. People who came to liberate Phnom Penh told the people that to leave it temporarily, Penn, that they would uh, have to cleanse up the capitalist groups first, and after they cleanse the city, then people would be allowed to return. Question. Question. When you were evacuated from Phnom Penh to an armed group, did the Khmer Rouge monitor? Or track down the people who were being evacuated from their departure Les until they reached their destination. Ont-ils surveillé and, uh, le voyage de ces habitants de leur point de départ? I leur could not observe that uh, clearly as I was uh, young, but I Réponse, heard the announcement on the mobile loudspeaker on the vehicle that people were asked qui était sur to return to where uh, they were que disait aux gens de and not ils and to just keep moving in the direction that people were uh, heading and not to travel in the opposite direction. So we kept uh, walking along with other people and we would rest where personnes. we we could together Et with nous other nous people. Là, nous pouvions avec d'autres personnes. But we would not be allowed to stop for long Mais as we only had to longtemps. stop for cooking food and after that we had to eat quickly and continue our journey. Nous pouvions nous manger rapidement et poursuivre notre Question. chemin. Question. Did you hear or can you still recall entendu, vous souvenez -vous? that the uh, Khmer Rouge used the word Anka Feudalism, si capitalism, imperialism of the 17 April people. Feudalism, and if you can recall it, or if you heard it, imperialism, people of the 17 April. If you have heard it, those terms mean. Do you know what those terms mean? Do you know what those terms mean? Do you know what those terms mean? About, for example, uh, the Sarayka soldiers. Les, I only knew exemple, that during the regime, I heard the word capitalism, capitalism, uh, capitalism, re reactionary, the 17 April people, etc. And the 17 April people were considered the capitalists. I, I myself was uh, scolded as a 17 April, April person. Reprocher d'être une personne du 17 avril et d'être une féodale. Question. Question. Can you tell the court why you were sent to sector 109 in Takeo province? Pourquoi l'on vous a envoyé au secteur 109 dans la province de Takeo? Answer. I did not know back then, but people who were living in Phnom Penh. If we were traveling along National Road Number Three, then we would be started to go towards the Takao, and that is to Sector One O Nine. And other people traveling at different National Roads would be taken at different sectors. So we. While we reached Tonle Bati, we were forced to board the GMC truck. Fait monter dans un camion and we GSC. were attacked through the countryside. Puis on nous a emmené dans la campagne. Question. Question. In your document, you stated that you were also sent to sector 105. Dans votre formulaire que vous avez complété, vous avez dit que vous êtes envoyé au secteur 105. What was the difference between sector 109 and 105? Answer. Réponse. In fact, there was no difference between the two sectors. Il n'y a pas de différence entre les deux. The situation and the condition were the same. That is, hard labor and the insufficient food. Du dur travail et we were treated the same. Nous étions traités de la même façon. So I believe it came out from one same policy. Selon moi, c'était la même politique. Qui était appliqué. Question. 
You said Question. that you lost your grandmother and a grandfather. Can you tell the court the reasons for the loss of their lives? Can you explain how they are dead? Answer: I lost my parents and a large number of my family and relatives. I did not know whether they were taken and killed or they starved to death. Et exécutés ou s'ils sont morts But de faim. Before the liberation of Phnom Penh, we usually visited one another Mais or we went to the theater Penh, together. Nous But nous upon the 17th April 1975, we were separated. And at the end of the regime, my grandmother and Et I were waiting for. Our relatives to arrive at our native village, but we did not see any other family members coming to the native village. Questioned due to the time limit, I have two more questions for you. In the area where you lived, were you treated as human being? Were you given your freedom to live? Avez-vous eu la liberté de quitter, si vous le souhaitiez Answer. Réponse. Referring to the freedom to live as a human being, that did not happen. We would be monitored day and night, even while we were sleeping at night. Somebody would. Alors come under our bed and listen to what we would say. They built uh, small houses and in a row of houses and we would have to sleep in those houses in the smaller rooms. So there was no freedom at all under the Khmer Rouge regime. Question, this is my last question. In your document, you said Dans ce document. There was a children unit and you worked in that children unit. What do you mean by a children unit? And what sufferings that the Khmer Rouge inflict upon you and upon other Cambodian people? Quelles sont les souffrances que vous avez endurées, vous et le peuple cambodgien? Answer. Réponse. We were gathered into a children's unit, and of Nous course, I did not understand why there was such a unit. Je ne savais pas pourquoi une telle unité why young children were gathered up and put into a unit and worked as adults. And in the groupe village, there was actually another children's unit in the village. village. So, regardless of where we were, Donc, we were Peu asked to work as adult in the uh, children's unit. Comme des so the purpose of the, the unit was to separate the, the, the male children and the, the female children. Des femmes, enfin, ou les and we, des we were put in separate uh, units. Qui dans des and différents. it's because of the three year, eight month and 20 day regime Et I suffered the bitterness, régime, the suffering. Ans, mois, I jours, lost my eyesight in my in both eyes. Très amer. J'ai perdu la vue dans les deux yeux. Madame Saint Sibotin, on behalf of the prosecution, I am Madame grateful for your detailed response in this proceeding. And I hope your responses will contribute to ascertaining the truth. Je crois à la and I wish you all the uh, very best. Thank you. Merci. Mr. President, I do not Monsieur have any président, further questions for the civil party. President, thank you. The floor is now Merci. given to Nunchi's defense to put the questions to the civil party. You may proceed. Mr. President, we have no questions. President, thank you. Merci. Lastly, the floor is Merci. given to Kiev's defense to put questions to this civil party. Thank you, Mr. President.
We do not have any questions for the civil party either. Thank you. President, thank you. Thank you, Madam Sain Si Bhutha. The hearing Merci, of Seine, your Bhutha. statement of uh, sufferings and impact and testimony voilà. has now concluded, and you may be excused from this court. Your statement of suffering, harm, and impact and testimony may contribute to finding the truth in this case. And we wish you good health and uh, good luck. And you may return. Court officer, in collaboration with the VSU, could you assist the civil party Saint Sivetan to return to her residence or wherever she wishes to go? And we also thank you to Madame Chai Marinette, representative from the TPO, for your assistance given through this civil party. The proceeding today is now concluded. We will adjourn the hearing today and resume tomorrow, commencing from 8.30 a.m. Tomorrow, we will hear the testimony of a witness Nous and an expert. The witness will be testified in the morning session via video link as he is in the United vidéo, States. And in the afternoon, we will hear the testimony of an expert, that is TCE12. Security guards are instructed to take the two accused back to the detention facility and have them return to the courtroom tomorrow morning prior to 8.30 as for a noon cheer. Bring him to the holding cell downstairs, which is equipped with audiovisual equipment for him to participate in the proceeding. The court is now adjourned.